here. So we'll have two recordings. Do you feel honored here, Odile? We're going to do two recordings. Okay. <laughs> for what it's worth. So when in English and when in French, right? Mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a feat. That would really be a feat. Subtitle. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I got three after, so I think we should get rock and rolling and people will join as they uh, come along from their uh, previous meetings here. So with that, let's get started here. Welcome everybody to the 22nd of July, Hyperledger Supply Chain Special Interest Group uh, webinar or standard meeting here. And this time we're fortunate enough to have Odile from Rene, from Renault. Uh, here to talk about certifying the compliance of vehicle components from design to production. So uh, appreciate your deal, you joining here. Before we get started, a, a couple things. Uh, our next session on August 5th will be a working session for our small, proje small projects, one around use cases that Eric is uh, leading up, as well as one around RFI questions, RFP questions that uh, Yari Bourbon and Blanca in Europe are heading up. So if you have any interest in joining or those groups, please uh, contact me and I can put you in touch with both of them. Uh, also next week, there is a session uh, from Simba Chain on connecting supplier and DOD blockchains for transparent part tracking on Wednesday, July 28th that Hyperledger is sponsoring. So you can go out to the Hyperledger website and you'll see that uh, session out there. So with that, uh, oh, one last thing here. I put in the chat Hyperledger antitrust policy link. So that governs uh, our meeting today uh, here. This is open. Please don't share anything that is confidential. I know deal, I'm sure you won't <laughs> um, here or anybody else who's uh, asked any questions. And Odile has asked for questions to remain until the end. Please type them into chat and then we'll come back and we'll grab those uh, here. So before we begin, or before I turn it over, I have two questions for Odile. Because she's a car person, she was very specific about that. That's great. That's great that she works at Renault. Odile, what was your first car? My first car was a uh, Renault 5. Wow, the you're at the right company then. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, and it was because, uh, you know, I, I come to Renault very, uh, very early. Huh? So uh, my, uh, my first car was a Renault, Renault 5. Wow, okay. And uh, what is your current car that you're driving? Uh, Espace. Renault, of course, Espace. Okay, okay. So we can all go back out to our local uh, dealer and site, see what the Renault S-Pass looks like. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. Odile, it's over, over to you. I'll, let, I'll turn it over to you here. Okay. You. Okay, so uh, hello everybody. My name is Odile Pansiatissi. I'm Blockchain Vice President at uh, Group Renault. And I spent, uh, as you mentioned, Tom, uh, most of my career in uh, vehicle engineering, you know, uh, design cars and all that. I do also some quality strategy and uh, digital transformation more recently. Uh, I've been very lucky in my career because I had the opportunity of working on working on very innovative projects such as uh, Twingo, maybe you hear about it, or Logan, very famous car. And uh, I've been head of the ICOL engineering until uh, 2015. And after that, I focus on digital transformation and in 2018, more specifically in blockchain technology, I also represent today French automotive industry for uh, blockchain. And I have the great honor to be coordinator of the first blockchain automotive development at scale called Exceed. And we will come back later on this project, but I would like first to, uh, to share the current context of our industry. If it works. Ah, 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 ah. Ça avance pas? Everything else has worked, so this is going to work too. 
Oh, there okay. you go. Okay, so uh, we have a, a big evolution of uh, society and industry. Uh, a society is uh, becoming more demanding, uh, responsive, connected, smarter, and uh, we have a strong desire of authenticity. And the severity of regulation imposed by authorities are increasingly, are increasing uh, rapidly and uh, pushed by the demands of uh, citizens. And uh, we, we can see uh, for ourselves, huh, more, uh, more of them, of us, are making uh, corporate responsibility of company as an absolute priority in a purchasing criteria. And in automotive industry, the competitive landscape is changing with uh, new entrants uh, and many times uh, not coming from uh, automotive industry. Huh? And we have new collaboration for offering other forms of mobility and not just cars. At the same time, we have uh, uh, an increase of the level of technology. And uh, we have connected cars, of course, but we have autonomous cars. So, uh, of course, we face a uh, huge investment for technological development. And at the same time, the amortization is not uh, that evident because the volumes due to customization and product diversity are decreasing. So high investment and low volumes. So uh, to face these societal challenges, we, we need to be more collaborative within ecosystem. And it's uh, really a condition of uh, surviving. Uh, for industry. So let's talk a bit uh, about uh, the customers. We, we know very well and we have seen the last months that we're living in a VUCA world, huh? volatility, uncertainty, complexity, ambiguity, and uh, the word of mouth uh, becomes more and more important and amplified by uh, social media. Uh, we see the demands of uh, customer following some trends I would like to share with you. Everybody wants to keep its ownership of data and the monetization, uh, the personal monetization becomes usual today. Each day customer wants seamless experience and put a company responsibility as top priority in buying criteria. Fraud is quite fearing, and particularly what we have seen with the uh, COVID crisis, uh, this fear is uh, increasing a lot. And uh, the reinforcement of authentication is really a must today. Uh, customer want to be protected by regulations such as uh, GDPR uh, in, uh, in Europe, but many other regulation. Uh, also, and uh, more and more numerous and more severe each day. So for car, what does it mean? Uh, just to, to give you some, uh, some figures, uh, to be uh, approved for sale, a vehicle must be compliant with all the regulation needed in the country of sale. And we have more than a hundred of regulatory domains covering the car. And uh, for example, a domain is a frontal crash, for example, or CO2 emission. And each regulation impacts each part and component until the end of a supply chain. And for a car, for example, we have more than 6,000 regulation characteristics under the responsibility of the global supply chain network. And of course, the compliance of the vehicle depends on the compliance of each characteristic. And the game will not be that funny if the updates and new regulation were not coming uh, frequently, such as uh, 300 changes a year, impacting new models or all applicable in specific due dates in one country and not on the other and so on. So regulation are more and more numerous, more and more severe, and interactivity between all the members of the ecosystem and the supply chain needs to be more and more reactive and efficient to answer to those new regulation. So the, this regulation status uh, has been uh, the starting point of uh, the project Exceed. In uh, 2018, we have seen the coming in September 2020 of a new regulation, including market surveillance. So we were used to conformity of production in the plants. But we have since last September 2020, an additional request on market surveillance, meaning that each country of European Union 
we will pick some cars on the market, no matter where and when it has been produced, and they will check the compliance. And we are not talking only about uh, uh, CO2 emission, but the scope has been extended to 61 regulation domains. Um, so you have seen that we have uh, in total 100, so more than 50% of domain. So it means that thousands of regulation characteristics. And we must be able to provide without undue delay uh, the detailed re result of uh, certification. It means that once or two times a month, we will need to produce in one week the complete information of compliance result, no matter when, the, uh, when and where the car has been produced. And uh, it, I can ensure that it's a tricky exercise when we need information in the depth of the supply chain. And the risk here is, of course, financial, because if, you're, if we are not able to answer within one week, we have a penalty of average 30 kilo euro by car. But uh, more than that, the reputation risk uh, in case of lack of reactivity. Yeah? Look at uh, what happens in uh, the Volkswagen gate. Yeah? So uh, if we take another regulation, we can talk about material in each industry. Uh, everybody knows uh, uh, for Europe, rich uh, European regulation since 2007. And uh, rich means registration, evaluation, authorization of chemical. And uh, the implementation of this uh, regulation has been very painful in 2007. And uh, why? Because uh, we need to ensure in uh, uh, this wonderful database that has been created, International Materials Data System, we need to be uh, to ensure that uh, real time we uh, we can we are compliant with uh, the declaration of uh, all the substance material for component, subcomponent, car, and blah blah blah. So uh, this is clearly not that easy. Huh? Uh, I was exchanging some days ago with one of uh, supplier rank two of painting with pigments and all that. And obviously the respect of this regulation remains really a pain point in terms of resources needed for being compliant. And uh, to complete the material scope uh, from beginning of this year, we have a new regulation on conflict minerals. I think that uh, uh, you have in the United States uh, already this kind of uh, regulation uh, involving tantal, tungsten, gold, and tin. And uh, this regulation imposes to have a traceability of mineral origin, of course, but also the logistic flow. Uh, being sure that uh, the flow will not pass through Iran or things like that, or conflict uh, country. Um, and in 2022, uh, we must be fully compliant uh, uh, using those materials. Uh, so uh, I can ensure that uh, tin is included in a lot of vehicle parts and components. So it will be a tricky exercise. And uh, with connected cars, let's talk about uh, the, the connected cars. Uh, our authorities are enriching the scope with the need of implementing a real cyber security management system to be able to answer to new audit requests. Here, we are talking of a real end-to-end -end compliance uh, with all the complexity of uh, hundreds of calculators uh, of a car that will be updated over the air. So uh, we have also the link of onboard software and offboard software with different life cycle, but with the same need of cybersecurity compliance. And of course, this future regulation, because it is planned in 2022, uh, will impact not only the OEM, but the entire supply chain. So as a conclusion, you can see that regulation context uh, put a high pressure on automotive industry particularly and requires new process and tools at ecosystem level, not at company level. And this is how the idea of Exist was born. So Exist are the initial for extended compliance end-to-end -end distributed. 
So uh, now I will I would like to sh uh, share a short video to uh, explain very quickly what is uh, what Exceed tool is. So today we have a very sequential organization in the event of audit. The authority request uh, is addressed to companies and to factories and supplier rank one, rank two, and uh, the path is the same for the answer. So it takes a long time. And uh, the Exit platform, uh, the idea is to, uh, to implement a platform used in a continuous mode, fed automatically or manually in real time by each company, regardless of rank. When the compliance information is needed, the response is directly available. So you can see a, a short demonstration to have a visibility of the component and subcomponent and having the status of uh, the, at one glance, you see if it is red or uh, green, and you see what kind of uh, test of monitoring plan are uh, not okay. So uh, what has been the journey until uh, this exit platform uh, creation? First, uh, the framing phase based on a pain point uh, as a regulation uh, severity and uh, at ecosystem level. Then we launch a proof of concept and uh, we make an industrial test of this proof of concept successfully in our Ronald Way plant with six supplier sites first. The test allow us to identify the points to be uh, completed. Uh, oh, Oh, okay, sorry. Uh, so this test allow us to test the governance process, of course, and the ability of working in competition and gives us confidence for passage at scale. Then we move forward to a classical MVP at scale developed following uh, the agile methodology. And uh, of course, we are in progress with uh, several uh, release in the, uh, in the coming weeks. So uh, let's focus on uh, the current status today. Uh, maybe you have seen some press release and articles in media about uh, exit project. Exit deals uh, then with the increase of regulation, but also customer demands about transparency of conformity and compliance. So the Exit project is all about collaboration through the supply chain. It answers uh, really a day-to-day -day ecosystem concern, and uh, particularly in this time of crisis where we may have uh, some uh, uh, some parts missing, and uh, we we have uh, run a stop and go uh, in the in the plants, and uh, it's very uh, difficult, uh, and it's a very fragile context for uh, quality in that uh, time of crisis. So uh, this platform uh, aims to increase quality and competitiveness. It's, uh, and that's very important, it's an inclusive platform. So it's really an opportunity to boost the digital transformation of the entire ecosystem. And not only for big players, but also for small companies. With Exit, we have the opportunity to enhance uh, technological uh, sovereignty, uh, uh, clearly with the blockchain technology. And uh, the ambition we have uh, is uh, really to create compliance conformity traceability platform for uh, the entire ecosystem of the automotive industry. And, and not only, I can ensure that I have some requests from uh, aeronautics uh, industry uh, about this platform. And uh, so this platform is secured by blockchain technology. Uh, I already mentioned that, but we have uh, defined uh, other steps about big data and also artificial intelligence. Um, because here uh, with that kind of platform, we create collective intelligence. And instead of executing uh, artificial intelligence algorithm on a company sample, of uh, data, we can execute it on uh, execute it on a sample of ecosystem data. So very uh, very rich and uh, very um, powerful. 
So this platform will use uh, sovereign cloud, of course, and uh, so it's a promise of high quality traceability and it brings real time. That's very, uh, that's a, a, a very important point to, to be real time instead of having a very sequential uh, information. Uh, this platform will allow uh, digital continuity of supply chain because everybody is bringing its part of the wall, its brick, uh, to build the, the, the wall. And it's quite interesting because, because what we have seen is that small company like SME uh, may not have or can't afford uh, information system on their own. And they have uh, here access to a powerful blockchain system at low cost. Uh, so this platform ambitions to onboard uh, first wide uh, European automotive industry um, and uh, it's uh, clearly an opportunity to boost uh, automotive industry competitivity and technological sovereignty. So let's sum up now uh, the, the value brought by Exceed. Uh, first, you get performance. You increase efficiency within the ecosystem with automatic and real-time access to data and automatic checking and alerting of data thanks to smart contract. The interesting added value is to create this digital continuity within the ecosystem. And uh, at that step, we implement operational excellence, not at company level, but at ecosystem level. And it's very powerful because each member of the ecosystem is winner. Then uh, you get reactivity in implementation of blockchain as it is not very intrusive technology. It's a sort of mesh above uh, the data system. So not very uh, intrusive in information system of each company. And uh, it's also reactive in uh, usage because it facilitates real-time exchanges. And the reactivity also allows to increase customer satisfaction. Uh, you have, of course, certification, authentication, and anti-fraud by design. And it's very good to give this um, trust to uh, our customer. They are very demanding on this uh, subject. And another important thing is the certification of data owning because uh, each member of the supply chain deals with a lot of information protected by IP or confidentiality. And uh, this uh, blockchain system is uh, really managed by each data owner and the certification of data owning is by design with this uh, blockchain technology. So last but not least, the opening of new opportunities with new data generation, new business opportunities and business model transformation thanks to uh, the, the new data offered. And uh, the important thing and the center of the value, uh, you find trust huh? within the working ecosystem in the supply chain, but also outside for the customers. And it's very uh, powerful in terms of brand image uh, for each company of ecosystem. So uh, Group Renault is at the origin of this project. And as mentioned, we tested exit project successfully in uh, 2019 in a Dwe plant with six supplier sites. And we have during this test lost more than 1 million documents at the speed of 500 transactions by second. I will share just after the lesson. Is it? No? OK. So um, uh, just after, I will share some lesson learned uh, thanks to this industrial uh, test. Uh, so after this first test, we quickly propose uh, first to French, then to European automotive industry to the collaboration on this project. And despite of uh, COVID crisis, we signed beginning of the year, the partnership contract with the first uh, partners. So when you work in collaboration and competition, 
you change from a customer supplier relationship we have in supply chain today to a partnership and uh, this is very powerful in the in the world evolution and uh, in difficult times uh, uh, covid crisis for example the collaboration is really the only way to continue progress and continue innovation so blockchain projects are collaborative projects and it means also shared expenses and shared risk so very interesting because one company has some difficulty in crisis time to afford all the risk on its own. So uh, I would like to share now a short video made with uh, the partners uh, with, uh, uh, about the project. So I uh, hope... We supply more than 500,000 parts a day. We deliver 15,000 door panels a day. It's not enough just to do things good. It's not enough that we deliver at a competitive price. We need to do that, but also we need to be faster. We need to be more flexible. We need to be more efficient in what we are doing. Cars are more and more complex, and the supply chain is getting longer and longer. We are a company in many countries and many continents. The regulations in each area are different. And in addition, each car manufacturer has his own demands. Non-compliancy is not an option. We have to be compliant. And uh, it is critical that uh, we are avoiding potential recalls because on, on the end, this will damage customer and supplier reputation. If we want to evolve, and want to be faster and more successful, collaboration need to uh, be done to accelerate the whole process. That's what Exceed is giving you. Exceed is the first big blockchain project in the automotive industry. This project has the ambition to create a compliance and conformity traceability platform for the entire ecosystem based on IBM and blockchain technology. With Exceed, we can improve our quality, reduce our costs, our waste, and that we can anticipate the problems. It's uh, bringing together all the good of sharing information without the bad. You have the ability to share data with the right uh, partners. It's still a secure, uh, and you're not sharing with uh, people who are not in your channel. And this is really an enormous advantage. IBM is a technological partner since the beginning and with Exceed we have transformed the customer-supplier relationship into partnership. Exceed will enable greater transparency and trust within the ecosystem, but its trust and confidence will be also given to our customers. We are proud to join Exceed because Exceed is proposing this end-to-end -end control uh, of the value chain and to identify the risks that we may have in the, around the non-compliancy. Exceed is a real opportunity for the European automotive industry, for Renault to confirm its innovation skills and for me to have the pleasure of coordinating this exciting project. Okay, so I would like to share now briefly some lessons learned thanks to uh, the, the usage of uh, Exit. So the first uh, point is think big, begin small. Um, you, you see a, a lot of proof of concept, what I call mushroom here and there to test an idea, but without a prior global vision of what will be uh, the, the final target. The proof of concept could lead uh, to a dead end. So you need to be clear on what will be the next step after the proof of concept if you want to scale a blockchain project. Otherwise, you may develop proof of concept on an unsuitable protocol, uh, for example, uh, and uh, not able for scaling up and uh, so you are not getting uh, the information 
uh, on the POC uh, experience and you don't see the value you need uh, because when you, you need to scale up, uh, you need to calculate the return on investment. And if your proof of concept has not do been done uh, with the right technology and uh, with uh, uh, getting information uh, for confirming the value, uh, it will be a fail. So you need really to think a proof of concept as a first step towards the final project. The second uh, important point is uh, to choose the right use case. Blockchain technology is generally not needed within one company. Eh? A lot of existing digital technology are sufficient to make the job. And uh, for example, you don't need uh, to for trusting supply chain to have blockchain. Um, you, you need it when you work with external company, when you need to certify information in a trustworthy mode without a third party certification, or when you have very complex processes, and I can ensure that in the automotive industry, we have very complex uh, processes with several actors and when it costs time and money to reconciliate data. So in that case, blockchain is really the ideal solution. Uh, the blockchain may be really considered as a sort of mesh above the processes and the database of all the members involved in the network. Because today, when we work in an ecosystem, each company has its own process to exchange data and information. And uh, then it means we define today a transformation matrix between the respective processes. And we spend more time in defining the means of exchanging uh, Excel file or things like that. And uh, we don't work a lot on the data itself. We lose time on uh, working on the format and uh, not focusing on data and data model. So that's really uh, what a blockchain technology uh, brings uh, as a, a, a huge value creating a lean ecosystem process and focus on data and data model instead of exchange format. And uh, due uh, to, to this uh, very security mode of data exchange, uh, what we have seen uh, in the in Exit project is that uh, partner may, may come very quickly. Huh? Uh, the best one has been uh, within uh, two months, uh, all the contract has been signed and uh, the, the link has been done uh, within two weeks. So very efficient. So third uh, recommendation, focus on pain point solving. <laughs> it, it, it's quite easy to, uh, to say that, but uh, I can ensure that uh, look at what uh, uh, the, all the proof of concept uh, you can find uh, on the market. Uh, many times you, you don't see exactly uh, wh what is the pain point solving. So um, blockchain project to be sustainable must bring value to each member of the ecosystem. So uh, when we have launched uh, the blockchain program uh, within Renault, uh, we have done a lot of workshop with each function of the company and everyone uh, thought about the relevant use case, but uh, we defined the priority based on pain point solving so that everybody was convinced of the value of the project. An important need is <laughs> the support of the top management. It's really key. It's key for each big transformation and blockchain technology brings big transformation within each company. Uh, you can see how difficult it is today uh, to make the digital transformation in some cases uh, because you break the silo through the function of one company and imagine breaking the silo through several companies with different culture. So uh, the collaborative work and competitive work is not that easy, I can ensure. 
So the decisions are taken in common for global optimum and no more by a, a single one. You change a supplier customer relationship into partnership. It's really huge changes. So if you are not supported at the top level, it will be almost impossible to put a project at scale. Number five, developing a project is one thing, making it resilient and sustainable is another one. So you need to think ecosystem for that because the more people are involved in blockchain project, the easier it will be to create standards and uh, to create evolution of features. And this is possible thanks to the trust brought by blockchain. That's what this technology can bring compared to other digital technology, sharing the cost of development and implementation and pushing the standardization through ecosystem for more efficiency and sustainability. Very important, <laughs> the legal aspect. When you work in collaboration, you have to manage legal issue between many partners. And uh, I can uh, tell you uh, the, the, uh, a sentence from a French author, Jean Giraudoux, who wrote, we all know here that law is the most powerful school of the imagination. Never has a poet interpreted nature so freely as a jurist. <laughs> you can imagine the result of the combination of the imagination of several jurists. So the recommendation here for the legal issue, because you will have legal issue when you develop a blockchain uh, and a partnership project, the recommendation here is to define among the partner a pilot legal department which will ensure the two by two convergence and provide a summary for the group. And this is really a, a, a guarantee of efficient uh, convergence. Last but not least, the governance uh, key point in the project success uh, at scale in case uh, of permission blockchain particularly, you may have the most wonderful project uh, of the world if the governance is not able to fix rules uh, and uh, to make it respected, the project will be in a difficult position. So uh, that was uh, some lesson learned uh, I, I, want to, I wanted to share with you before sharing the next steps of uh, Exceed. Uh, of course, we are onboarding widely all the relevant uh, actors of automotive industry through wide Europe first but through the world uh, at last. And uh, today we have, uh, of course, a member of supply chain, but uh, of course we have more and more technological partners that are coming because um, uh, we have the, the blockchain project, of course, but uh, we have all the links with uh, the legacy system of each company. And uh, so we are working also, and we have created a specific uh, status for these uh, technological partners that want to, uh, to join the initiative. Then uh, once we, uh, we will have uh, the, uh, finish the uh, good level of uh, onboarding, we, we plan to enlarge the scope of features uh, today, we are dealing with safety and uh, regula uh, regulatory characteristics, with geometry and with raw materials. But of course, we will enlarge because compliance is covering a lot of domain. Uh, we will have, uh, with the over-the-air update of software, a software module uh, that is uh, particularly uh, valuable. Uh, we expand, when we talk about end-to-end, -end, we expand the time phases, not only in production today, but in design and after sales, uh, because we have more and more requests from authorities to ensure the compliance and conformity of repair and maintain cars. But uh, the, the more we go on and the more we enrich the new modules, huh? 
uh, battery traceability, of course, but here we have a specific topic because battery traceability is, uh, I think it's uh, the longer uh, chain. Uh, only for traceability of cobalt, uh, you have uh, 16 ranks. Uh, so here we work in interoperability with uh, other industry. We have uh, chemical industry, mineral industry, and uh, so we are uh, working with uh, other OEM to define uh, the right architecture of this quite specific uh, module battery, yeah? because we have uh, the realization of the battery on the car, and this will be uh, clearly on exit. But after that, you have a, a very long and a, a very uh, numerous type of industry. So uh, we are working uh, with all this uh, uh, industry to see the best uh, cutting off uh, of this, uh, this chain to be uh, more efficient. Then we, we talk also about recycling, of course, and uh, also uh, CO2 footprint. So uh, that's uh, clearly the, uh, what, we, what we have in mind, but uh, we have many more to come. Uh, we have about uh, capacities, of course, when we live, uh, what we live today with uh, uh, electro electronic components, uh, of course, we think uh, about um, adding a module of capacities and uh, each day we have new, uh, new ID. Um, so uh, Exceed will uh, contribute, of course, to the future of automotive and uh, will serve the acceleration of time to market because the stake uh, and the challenge uh, of tomorrow will be the speed. And uh, the, the, the quicker you, you, will, uh, you will be on the market and uh, the best we, you, you will be. So uh, the important point is uh, to, as I mentioned already, to think ecosystem and the customer must be known at ecosystem level and no more at company level. If we want to go fast, if we want to uh, improve our processes, we need to have this uh, global ecosystem thinking and of course for a customer, and uh, of course, uh, as uh, at uh, partnership level also. So um, of course, external growth are key for the future of uh, industry, for being sure to deliver relevant and integrated products and uh, also new services for new usage. And for that, we will need agility at ecosystem level uh, to do that. So we have a, a long and tough path in front of us, but uh, we have the keys for going on now. And blockchain in, is one of these keys because it is an enabler to collaboration and competition. So that's all for the presentation. Thank you for your attention. And I'm sure you have a lot of questions. I have seen a, a lot of questions in the chat. Uh, I will be pleased to answer, and I kindly ask a blockchain expert, Yves Michel Le Porcher, uh, that is with me, uh, who is with me, excuse me, uh, to join uh, for answering your technical questions. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, floor is yours. Merci, Odile. Thank you very much for a uh, great presentation and sharing all the wonderful stuff that you guys have done with Exceed here. So. In the interest of time, I'm going to get right to the questions here. And the first one here is, can the end customer view the evidence of compliance? If they can, couldn't competitors also view this information? So uh, in terms of visibility, uh, of course, uh, uh, the visibility is uh, only for uh, one channel. It means your competitor will not see uh, your information. Um, that's clear. Then uh, do we open it uh, to the customer? Not at that step, but uh, we are quite sure that uh, in, the coming, uh, in the coming years, the requests of customers are uh, more and more important about the transparency. So 
um, we it really uh, it will be surely uh, something to uh, to to add uh, in the coming years. Not today, but uh, in the coming years, quite sure. Good. That probably informs your statement there. The custom customer must be known at the ecosystem level. That's a pretty bold statement. Yeah. Deal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Next question. Why did you decide on IBM as your development partner? Oh, so uh, very simple. Um, so uh, I start, uh, the CEO assigned me the, the mission in uh, April 2018. Uh, in May 2018, I identified uh, that Exceed will be, uh, it was not Exceed at that time, but a blockchain project about uh, trustability of compliance would be a, a great project. And uh, then I go and, um, and uh, see the big service provider and uh, see uh, which, which one will be uh, interested in, uh, uh, in developing uh, this first co-innovation. And uh, of course, we choose uh, the best one, so IBM, because uh, IBM, uh, of course, huh, we know that uh, we have some links huh, between IBM and Hyperledger, but uh, IBM is uh, the, the most advanced partner in uh, development of project at scale. And one more time, we uh, didn't search um, a partner for proof of concept. We were searching a partner in view of this big platform. <laughs> so that's why we, we choose uh, IBM. And uh, we, as Renault, we develop and we test in a DWE plant with uh, the MVP developed by IBM. And when we launch uh, the partnership, uh, we, we do again uh, a competitive analysis and uh, there is a, a tough competition. Uh, we identified 10 companies able to, uh, to develop uh, this type of uh, uh, project. We make a selection of four and uh, then we have the, the last tough competition between the, uh, the, four, uh, the last four bigs and IBM uh, has been uh, chosen uh, in the partnership as uh, the best one. And not only for the development, but uh, also for the, uh, the running uh, of the solution, because uh, it's not only to develop a platform, uh, we need to take care about the cost, uh, the running cost, uh, and uh, the ability of uh, scaling and taking in account all that. So uh, we have uh, defined today uh, two steps in the, in the current contract. The first one is uh, before the creation of consortium, we are today in a partnership, not a consortium, uh, and uh, we will create the next year uh, a consortium, so probably a specific society and, uh, and all that. And, uh, but we, we want to test first all the governance process and all that with a limited number of partners to be sure that the consortium we launch next year will be uh, sustainable and uh, will be profitable for each member of uh, the partnership and not only the big companies, but also the SME. So we are working uh, a lot with uh, SME because if we want uh, to have a total view of supply chain, it's not only the wrong one huh, that is interesting. We have it uh, today. Huh? Uh, the important point is how we, um, we onboard SME and how SME uh, can see value in bringing information in the, in the blockchain. And that's uh, uh, the key point. I love that you're using the word SME so much. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> All those players out there are trying to figure out how do I use blockchain and get some value out of it. So that's great. So let's go on to the next question here. How long did it take from the moment you decide to use blockchain to the end of your first successful POC? Oh, uh, we, uh, I mentioned that the, the ID uh, was in May 2018. 
uh, we begin to uh, to work uh, with IBM uh, end of uh, 2018. We um, so uh, we have the the first proof of concept by uh, Christmas 2018. Then uh, we have an MVP that we test in uh, 2019. So. Uh, okay quite uh, quite big and uh, after that of course the covid uh, put uh, um, uh, some delay in what we want to do because uh, we have some companies that are in very bad situation and uh, the first partner we have uh, have no more resources for um, uh, for joining us uh, so we we had changed uh, the partner during the 2020 year uh, but um, what takes a, a long time is really the, the contractual phase, because as I mentioned, uh, uh, you, you have a lot of uh, legal department and uh, everybody wants to, uh, to change a word and all that. And uh, what has been very, uh, let's say, uh, tough and takes time is uh, to be clear on uh, when you make this kind of uh, collaborative project uh, about IP, about confidentiality and all that. So uh, we take uh, um, about uh, six months huh, for, uh, uh, for converging uh, in, the, in the contract. Wow, and this is not the contract between you and IBM. It's between oh, no, no, it's uh, yeah, 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 IBM the and, the, and the other partners yeah, that yeah, were involved. Yeah, okay, and that was the, the most difficult point, huh? because uh, you know everybody uh, has his own view on uh, intellectual property and confidentiality and blah blah blah, blah uh, about the number of years, and uh, so it, it takes time. You were making up the contract along the way. That's great. Okay, good. Let's go to the next question here. How should Exceed evolve from proof of compliance conformity to actually secured by blockchain, open paren, cybersecurity protection of all the vehicle connected components to intelligent transport systems? How? <laughs> and I, I, Yari, you might want to uh, hop on and explain that a little one, a little bit. Okay, so uh, you know it, it has been a, 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 a long path huh? and a, a tough path. Um, you 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 need to be resilient, huh? and uh, you need to be uh, to be sure that uh, all the you need to be sure that uh, the, your project has value. That's uh, an important point. So if you are convinced like that, uh, you have uh, to implement the three phases uh, we, we just share. I, I think we can go back uh, to this uh, slide, maybe this one. Huh? Uh, so uh, you, you have some cycle to, to respect uh, project framing, program uh, solving, uh, and uh, you know it's. Uh, I, I make a lot of cars in my uh, career, and uh, what is very important is the first phase of framing. If you don't frame well your project, it would be a, a very long path. But after that, uh, when your uh, your uh, pre-contract is quite good. After that, uh, you have some uh, proof of concept to be done, then uh, MVP, and uh, it's uh, business as usual, I think. Okay, good, thank you. Let's go on, so we have uh, four minutes left here. So uh, question about, is IBM hosting all nodes of the blockchain? If so, when do you plan to extend the network of additional nodes from different parties to bring in a degree a degree of decentralization and a similar question what version of hyperledger fabric are you currently using okay so uh, I, I leave the the floor to uh, to Yves Michel <laughs> all right <Yves. laughs> hello everyone uh, currently we are using version 2.x of uh, the protocol if you want deeper I think it's 2.4 and the 
first time for the question. Could you please repeat? Sure. Uh, let's see oh, here. It's a note. Yeah, is IBM hosting all the nodes of the blockchain? If so, when do you plan to extend the network with additional nodes from different parties to bring in a degree of decentralization? Actually, it depends on the way you create your architecture on one side and the resiliency of the system on the other. So indeed, we use Kubernetes to make it smart and nice at first. And second point, actually, because it's a multi-cloud, we use the, uh, con the consensus and the uh, in the in the way to there's a, sp a special tuning for that so that we can send it to several clouds each person having it but please note as you know that on iPolager you have two kinds of uh, of nodes to be certain that we reach a certain level of efficiency you cannot put committing nodes on everyone so yes you have replicas just for reading data uh, that correspond to the to to the to this, um, uh, how can I say, um, distribution phase. But as of today, with 2.x, please note that there is a limitation on how much you can, uh, um, can I say, uh, distribute the system. Maybe uh, what I can add uh, also that uh, during the test phase uh, in uh, our industrial test as Renault with uh, some suppliers, uh, we have tested and uh, confirmed the fact that we can have, uh, we, we implement a, a node within uh, Renault. Uh, to test uh, how it works. And of course, we have defined the architecture and I see some comments, right architecture is node and cluster. Well, it depends. Uh, I think uh, you, you have to think about uh, the, the volume of data. There is uh, some tricky things huh? because when you talk about uh, compliance, uh, the, the volume of data is uh, quite important. Huh? So uh, we, and IBM has been uh, very, um, uh, very helpful. Uh, thanks to his experience on the on the subject, uh, to define the right architecture adapted to uh, the need we have, because uh, as we mentioned, compliance of uh, of a car, we are dealing about uh, uh, terra uh, of uh, data, so it, it's a tricky exercise. And the important point into is to think not only of the beautiful object, but also the running cost in production mode when you have worldwide uh, you have hundred and hundred of plants and thousand of thousand of terra so uh, it's a um, tricky exercise need to to think a bit uh, about that beautiful thanks for those responses last question here can you guys stay on for a couple more minutes here can i give you one last question yeah. okay yeah. great so uh let's see here can you please explain briefly if you request a certification for each member of the Exceed network, and then the second part of that is, would this partner be audited by a certification company like Bureau Veritas, and on which aspect? Uh, so uh, it, it's funny that you you mentioned Bureau Veritas because we uh, we are working with them and they want to uh, to on board on the on the project. Of course, not as a partner because uh, but uh, as a uh, as a sponsor. Um, so we uh, because uh, blockchain certified things. Huh? Uh, what we what we uh, put when we talk about compliance of the ICOL, we have uh, seen that we have characteristic and in the production uh, in the production mode we define monitoring plan during the production and we have some characteristics that we uh, monitor during the production uh, for uh, in uh, for ensuring and certifying the conformity so we have all these tests that are done 100% uh, for 100% of the part or frequential test and uh, the result we we are to talking about the results of this test that are uh, implemented in uh, in this platform so uh, here it we have uh, the the partners uh, can link directly through api 
uh, their system uh, if they have a database uh, with, the, with the result, or they can enter that uh, manually if they have a manual process. And uh, of course, uh, the certification will be uh, done once to check uh, if the end-to-end uh, -end -end process is uh, correct and uh, if the certification of the process is okay. But after that, uh, of course, huh, uh, we, uh, as, uh, as usual in blockchain, huh, uh, garbage in, garbage out, but we have the history. And uh, for example, if I take the example of the, the cobalt, uh, of course, uh, you have a lot of uh, mineral producer uh, that thought that uh, putting the uh, fake data in blockchain will, uh, will be a good solution. But uh, with that, we can have, uh, it, it doesn't prevent from having physical audits and make some uh, test of consistency with uh, the physical audit. So, um, of course, uh, the, the, the more the trust uh, will be done and the more consistent the physical audit will be with uh, uh, information in blockchain, of course, uh, the more trust we, we will have. But uh, it's... Um, Anyway, uh, you can, it's uh, immutable uh, data. So uh, that's really a, a, a huge improvement. And uh, one important thing is uh, you have automatic check and alert of uh, uh, not realization of a test, for example, uh, that we don't have today. Yeah? Uh, so it's a, it's a more uh, trustworthy uh, tool than what we have uh, today. Because today we can discover, and sometimes uh, what we have seen, uh, we, we had uh, uh, last year, I think, uh, a concern with the supplier because uh, uh, he didn't do any more the test needed uh, in the monitoring plan. And we, we don't have any uh, alert uh, on, this, uh, on this point. And we, uh, of course, uh, we we discover that with a, a non-quality result. So uh, it's more systematic, it's more automatic, and uh, the added value of people in charge of quality generally uh, will be more focused in analyzing the result instead of getting the information of the result. And that's today the, the main point. Great, great, thank you. Um, there's a couple more questions here, but I'm going to pass on those. Are you okay with people contacting you with questions if they have it? Yeah, yeah, questions? of course, of course. Beautiful, beautiful. So, merci, Odile, merci, Eve, here. Thank you very much for uh, taking your time. You guys have a great project. We know now that you've been working on it, and you still are smiling since April 2018. Here. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> three three so years and all few months. So thank you very much for sharing this with us. Uh, we really appreciate it. And with that, everybody, thanks for asking your questions and uh, joining in. And for those on the recording, I uh, hope you enjoyed this recording also. So with that, good day, good evening, and have a great weekend, everybody. Bye. You too. Bye.